I think that I've probably debated whether or not to do this video for like three or four years now. But as of today, I decided, you know what? I'm going to do this video because it might be useful to somebody. Okay, let's talk about an issue that's very specific to one particular workflow. When you're using software monitoring and you have monitoring mutes playback tape style enabled when you're using GreenZ or native low latency monitoring. That happens to be the combination that I use. My dropout protection is set to medium, audio device block size, always 32. I use this all the time. So this works out great for 98% of my work that I do. But there is the odd time that the artist needs to hear what they've recorded in addition to their live input previous to the punch in point. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, but let's go over this really quickly. When we use tape style, which is essentially auto input monitoring um, with Green Z, this is just a dynamic mode, right? When the track is basically record enabled, let me just record enable this over here and I'll switch my monitoring over. When the track is record enabled and the transport is stopped, we hear our live input. If I record something, we are going to hear our live input, obviously. If I push play, I will not hear anything. It will play back what's on the track, regardless of whether there's something recorded or nothing recorded at all. There was nothing on the track, so we didn't hear anything. This works out for the most part, no problem for me. I use this all the time. But what about if the artist needs to hear what they had recorded previously? They need to be able to hear their live mic plus the playback. Okay, in those cases, you have two basic different workflows that I use. We have the option to checkerboard our tracks, which would be just instead of record enabling track A, just record enable a track B. And now you can hear everything that you need to up into that point. And then if you needed to record over top, you would have the option to do that. So that's one really easy workflow. This is just going I'm to recording to record. I can and sing along and then here's my point here. And then I've picked it up from where I needed to. After this is done, very simple to do any edits that are needed and you can get a nice smooth transition to whatever you need to do. So that's one approach, okay? Just having two tracks. Now, you might not want to manage two tracks and at the end of the day, you might want all your audio to be recorded just on this one track up here. So if that's the case, then there's another approach I like to use and it involves a free third-party plugin. Um, it's very, very simple. Essentially what we need to do is we're creating an additional track only for the sake of allowing us to monitor through that track only during playback. Okay, that sounds confusing, but it's actually not that confusing. What I'm going to do here is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna duplicate the track, not duplicate track complete, just duplicate. What this will do is if I have any sends or plugins that I'm monitoring through, it will activate those same sends. So I have an equal sound in terms of what I'm listening to. And then in this case, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring up my Mutomatic free plugin. And then this basically just allows you to control the flow of audio based on the transport state. So I've created a basic preset, which I call pre-roll, playback pre-roll. And what this is doing is it's cutting off all the audio when the transport is stopped. It's cutting off the audio when I'm recording and it's only allowing the audio to pass through when we're in playback. So now all I have to do in this case is monitor enable this track. It's cutting off the audio because I'm already hearing it from here. But in this case, now I get basically exactly what I need. I'm gonna enable punch in so that Studio One will automatically do the punch in at this point. But now because this track is monitor enabled, it's not gonna record anything, but we'll hear it. So now let's go ahead and run that recording. This so is just I can going hear to everything. allow I'm me to talking record. Along, and, and now I'm recording what I need to, and this is only gonna record based on the punch in points that I've set over here. So that's it, one third party plugin, which will allow you to monitor the information so you'll hear a live input plus whatever was previously recorded. Obviously not the greatest for anything past one or two tracks. I wouldn't necessarily want to create 10 different inputs that are monitor enabled if I was recording drums. But I think for the most part that it's a really usable workaround if you're recording something stereo or a simple vocal. Anyways, that's it for me. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.